Top Med Talk. Well, hello and welcome to Top Med Talk. We're in Denver, Colorado for the Society of Obstetrical Anesthesia and Perinatology, or SOAP. I'm Desiree Chapel, your host today, co-editor-in-chief of Top Med Talk, and we are so excited to be here. We really wanted to say thank the SOAP organization for supporting us here in the exhibit hall with a beautiful booth and uh, being right in the center of it all. So thank you very much. Now, in two, true Top Med Talk tradition, and we are sitting down with presenters, attendees, and fortunately, we get the opportunity to sit down with leadership within the SOAP organization. So this morning, we have Dr. May Pian Smith and Dr. Heather Nixon joining us, President and Vice President of SOAP. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having us. It's a real pleasure. Yeah, it's, it is absolutely our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, very good. This is a wonderful meeting so far. Thank you so much for having us. May, I would love to start with you. Tell us a little bit about the SOAP organization. Well, the SOAP organization, as you mentioned, stands for the Society for Obstetric Anesthesia and Perinatology. Our mission is to elevate the care of mothers and their babies everywhere. And we have a multi-pronged approach. It's through research, it's through advocacy, and dissemination through education of best practices. And right now, we feel very relevant because maternal health, as you may know, is kind of in a crisis situation. Yes, it's all over the news. Yeah. <laughs> so we certainly don't want to let a good crisis go to waste. Right. We want to take advantage <laughs> of this opportunity to really rally people because we know that we can accomplish so much more in a synergistic way, being very inclusive, getting other stakeholders who care about of obstetric care. So we know we can't do it alone. We're trying to grow our membership. We're trying to involve more caring people who are in different role groups. Yeah. And we're really excited about how we can team together. Yeah, that's fantastic. The organization's been around for a while, but it sounds like you guys are really have been working to position yourself to take advantage, really, of the, not take advantage in the wrong way, but to highlight what you guys are doing right now. Yeah, SOAP has been around for quite a while. So uh, next year will be our 55th annual meeting. So wow. um, it was originally started with a group of researchers who were very interested in obstetric anesthesia. I've been lucky enough to be part of the organization and watch it kind of blossom and become more. I've seen changes on the board, changes in our initiatives, changes in the way that we kind of navigate the world outside ourselves. And so I think we've come from this real small group of really passionate people who got together every year and really loved each other and parted really hard and just loved, you know, kind of celebrating with each other of what we do and the passion that's behind it. And we're really expanding and evolving. And that's really the key. I think May hit the topics really well is that we want to be more inclusive. We want to be, and this this has come up with the board several times, is we want to be kind of the voice of obstetric anesthesia and give providers and patients and empower them to really have best practices, take care of each other, feel very comfortable, promote dialogue, promote, you know, kind of like people knowing how to do this. And even in difficult situations and the sickest patients, because our patients are getting sicker, um, if we want to be a resource and we want to be a group that people come to and feel very comfortable that we are supporting all maternal care. And it doesn't matter where it's happening, anywhere in the world, and that we want to help them. Yeah, that's great. May, tell us a little bit about the meeting this year, because I have just been so impressed. Phenomenal speakers. The breakouts have been great. I've loved looking at the posters. Tell us a little bit more about the focus this year. Well, thanks for saying that, because our uh, annual meeting and live events committee and the, in, in the annual meeting in particular committee has really worked hard to make a very comprehensive program that I think has something for everyone. And in fact, we have the highest attendance ever in SOAP history this year. We're dying to know what it is. It's, uh, at least 947, 947 as of last num last night. Yeah. But I actually just saw someone uh, registering just this morning. So, 948 at least. <laughs> so, we, we, you know, we, we think that's a reflection of the excitement that people are having about our cause and also the opportunities to contribute, to learn, and to connect through the society. Yeah. And this is not just an American meeting. I, I have been fascinated by the international uh, the international people that are here. Yes. So um, the international people are here and participating in different ways. 
Some are learners and participants, some are faculty. We're also very pleased that this year we had an international symposium with anesthesiologists from uh, China. Oh, fantastic. And uh, they were able to overcome all sorts of visa barriers to make this happen. (laughs) We had a joint program with speakers from China as well as uh, the U.S. on during this pre-meeting symposium. And we're really happy to even have had a um, real-time interpreter translation service available as well. So I think that that really helped people uh, be involved, engage, and really feel connected. So that was important for us. That's cool. It's one of the first times I've heard that at a meeting like this that you've been yeah. able to do interpretation services. So that's... that's it was cool. a first for us as well. Yeah. So we're really glad about the direction we're going in. Yeah, that's cool. And Heather, for you, what have, what's what been a highlight of the meeting um, so far? What are you looking most forward to? Yeah, I used to be on the AMLE committee. I used to kind of be part of the charge of making some of the meetings before I became vice president. And uh, it was wonderful to kind of see the themes that evolve each year of things that are really important in our world. And so on the heels of a a talk that we had at last year's meeting, there was a lot of enthusiasm about really kind of focusing on the patient and hearing their experience and improving their experience. And so that's where this year's theme came from, was focusing on the patient. We are really good at knowing our medication doses and, and doing all these, you know, kind of advanced pharmacology and procedures. And we this year we kind of said, okay, let's step back and let's look at what experience patients are having. And so we were so lucky this year to have Susan Burton come. And she is the podcast writer and host of um, Serial and New York Times, The Retrievals, which was the number one podcast in 2023. Oh, that's so cool. And um, it impacted a lot of us. Actually, I it was recommended to me by one of my CRNAs after he heard me talk a little bit about patient experience. And he said, I think you'll really like this. This is really interesting. Um, And her um, podcast was about what the patient voices are and how they interact with the health system providers, um, you know, room for improvement, areas we can make a huge difference. And so then May led a a panel with a, a group of people about patients' experience and kind of how do we communicate and partner with people better? How do we deal with patients who have, you know, trauma coming in? And how do we get to those stories so that we can be supportive and we can really improve long-term outcomes with their mental health and not just their physical health. So that's a real focus of this year's meeting, along with all the really great research that yeah. always comes with so yeah. I mean, it's amazing. And we have a clinical track and a research track. And so um, I, I'm excited for it all, but I think the first day was just spectacular. I got such good feedback. I had people crying. In the I, I, we've it. heard that a time. Yeah, crying and just saying, thank you. This is what we needed to talk about today. And this is next step and this is next level. And this is really just the, you know, kind of movement of and it it just demonstrates the passion we have for really having women have good experiences, knowing that the healthcare system isn't always designed for them to have that for us. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It was really a great reminder to all of us, too, that at the end of the day, it's the patients that need to have a good experience. Yeah. And as someone that doesn't do OB myself. I mean, I've, I mean, I can't stop thinking about it and how this translates to all of us and how we. This is where we need to be. This is what we need to do for our patients. So I, but we're referring to the the trauma um, informed care lecture, and uh, we actually we interviewed a, a former colleague of mine who just attended uh, the lecture. She had just come out of that, and again, kind of the tears. And she, we talked to her a little bit about her experience from that. So if you can get a chance, listen to that. Yeah. Um, I know we're uh, we're a bit in the time crunch, as it, it always is with the president and vice president of the, of the organization. But a couple more things that I want to talk about just very quickly touch on is, and you referred to this earlier, you know, maternal mortality, maternal health, uh, and the crisis that we're in here, specifically in the U.S., but worldwide, has been a major focus in the news and in our space. And um, I'm vice president of clinical quality for a large national anesthesia company called North Star. And um, this is a focus for us this year. And when we have this conversation about how an anesthesia do we impact this, because a lot of clinicians don't necessarily know if you're just working intraoperatively, how do we impact maternal health or maternal mortality? Thank you for asking that, because that is really a major focus for us this year and the coming years. So we obviously like to think that we have a lot to contribute We are hoping to advance what we know about best practices through research and advocacy. 
And also we realize that we can't do this alone. So we're working in a multi-pronged way to uh, get, for example, so represented state representatives in every single state of the U.S. so that we're not just talking to ourselves and learning from ourselves, but really impacting the people who are on the front lines, taking care of every mother and their baby. So I'm looking at Heather. She's nodding. I think she has some other ideas in mind, too, about... Yeah. I think that um, behind the scenes, and, and maybe people don't know this, is that many of our core group of anesthesiologists are involved in their maternal mortality report groups for the state. Oh, oh, so I, okay. I served with Linoy for for eight years, and I sat with several other of my colleagues there. Um, and you review uh, some of these deaths and, and what happened and what led up to them. And then um, we look at things now like social determinants of health. Yeah. And um, our meeting in Chicago for SOAP actually focused on disparities in health care. Mm-hmm. And why is this happening? And so we had some really key speakers getting into the nitty gritty of how do these systems evolve? How do we kind of look for um, equity in health care? Right. And how do we bring everyone up to the same level? And, you know, so things I think, um, you know, the anesthesiologist can do is to do, you know, review in their own systems of what's happening, what are the potential outcomes, what are the bad outcomes, who are they happening to, and are there social determinants that kind of may have contributed to that? Um, you know, are there disadvantaged, are your disadvantaged or non-English speaking patients more uh, vulnerable to these mistakes? Yes. Um, so really looking at your data critically of not only what was their blood pressure and, you know, what were baby's APGARs, but really the whole picture of like, how are these patients doing? Are they getting readmitted? Right. And what are they getting readmitted for? Um, we can help as anesthesiologists optimize patients for, you know, especially our really sickest patients who have underlying cardiac disease. We can be involved in multidisciplinary planning about, you know, making sure that they're optimized coming in so they're not coming out in an extremis. And then we can really be honest about setting up safety systems in our unit. So do you have a hemorrhage cart? What's in it? Who maintains it? Do you have safety bundles? What's your communication? Are you doing simulation on your unit? These are things anesthesiologists or anesthesia providers can drive yeah. and they're resources that our group is working on. And we're happy to help systems. We have uh, SOAP Centers of Excellence and it's yeah. kind of a checklist to kind of help people know what is quality care. So we encourage many institutions to look at those metrics, see kind of like what and, and actually going through the application process is amazing for institutions because they see what they're lacking and what they might are areas for improvement. Yeah, that's fantastic. I know over the next couple of days, we're going to have more conversations with um, leadership and committee members and things like that from from SOAP. So we're going to hear a lot more about the resources. Uh, Just in closing, though, I I wanted to um, normally we always start with introductions, but I thought, you know, if you can talk a little bit about your background, how you got to become president and then what your most proud of and the work that you've done as president of SOAP. Thank you. (laughs) I'm an obstetric anesthesiologist from Mass General in Boston. And my other hat that I wear there is chief of quality and safety for anesthesia across the MGB enterprise. So that includes uh, 14 different hospitals. So it's been really gratifying to work with SOAP and combine my love of obstetric anesthesia care with safe patient care and quality care. So this has been very rewarding for me. This year, as Heather mentioned, we're really uh, focusing on expanding the breadth of our impact. Um, And we're trying to look for ways that we can measure that either through membership, through programming that we're offering for different types of people with different types of challenges in their practice, accrediting more centers of excellence, uh, inspiring people to have the metrics that are required for that kind of de- designation. Um, and I think through all these efforts, we're going to help everyone uh, do more what they want to do for patients. Yeah. Uh, one thing we've realized is to support the best quality care for our patients, we have to also support the workforce. Mm-hmm. And so I think bringing people together through a society like that sharing our learning, sharing our challenges is going to help all of us. Yeah. And it seems like the organization is very inclusive and those are things that you guys have worked. We're trying to. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Well, good. That's so wonderful. And Heather, about, how about you? Just tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of your journey to where you are as vice president this year. Yeah, absolutely. I am an obstetric anesthesiologist fellowship trained as well. I work at the University of Illinois at Chicago. I'm the division head there. 
If I had to do one word to sum up kind of my career, my pathway, it would be educator. So I've been in the programmatic education, some education research, and really that's kind of my my passion, you know, finding new ways to get information out and to help learners get to where they need to be and really, if you don't feel confident and competent. And so within SOAP, I kind of, you know, as a young fellow coming out, I, I saw this amazing world and all these people hugging each other at this meeting and I was like, I want to be part of this. And they, wow, they get it. And they, they like this. They like what we do, right? Yeah. And I started joining like little committees and kind of met all these people. And I, it was, it's such a, it is such a society filled with mentors and people who are so willing to give with their times. And I will even say May is, I would consider her one of my mentors as well. Um, but I have so many of them from so many institutions. And so it is a really welcoming group. And so I think that I was able to find myself in the back rooms very easily because I had all these people who were just like, come with us. Yeah. You know, but I think that as far as kind of like what I think our big goals are, you know, we, we really do want to express that, like, we know that, you know, this group of people who are here at this meeting today are not the only people taking care of OB patients. Yeah. And we know from survey responses and kind of like just talking to people that some of the consensus statements that we put out, some of the educational materials that we put out in this meeting are really helpful for people who don't do this full time, yes. but do want to take really good care of patients or take their most of their practices OB, but maybe they don't have resources at their home institutions. So I think, you know, the educator in me says, we want to give you everything you need to feel like you're supported, you're competent, and that your patients will have the best outcomes. And so that's really, I think, a direction that all of it, everything SOAP does, whether it be the state representatives, the COE, the uh, research, the, the clinical education resources, our website, everything is geared with an eye towards that of how can we help you. And so I would just put out at the end of this, you know, for anyone who's listening to this, if you do want to connect with SOAP and leadership, we are super available. Like any one of us, we love, I, I, I even great. love the blind emails of like, hey, <laughs> so I don't talk on this. Like, what do you think about this? And I'm like, let me hook you up with these people because we want everyone to thrive. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And also, I would say that this year we are launching our first ever endowment fund campaign of SOAP. Yes. And so we realize that we've been very blessed with membership that's very passionate and excited and, as Heather mentioned, very connected. Uh, whether or not we hug, we're very <laughs> <life> connected. <laughs> uh, but also that you know, our grand dreams are going to need some real funding. Mm -hmm. And so we want to invite people to also join the philanthropic effort that we're launching this year as well. Ooh, that's fantastic. I love that. Well, again, so impressed by you, you, the organization here. And I love talking, you know, to leadership in, in different organizations like this, because I want our listeners to hear that, you know, they could potentially hear or see themselves in you. I mean, you know, we, we are always trying to bring new people in. And just because you're not a fellowship trained obstetrical a anesthetist or, or uh, anesthesiologist doesn't mean that you can't be part of this organization, correct? Absolutely. In fact, mm -hmm. we want to we want to engage people who are not fellowship trained, actually, yeah, yeah. because we all care about the same thing. Yeah. yeah. And who are not doing this every single day, like you said, Heather. And we know and we know the bulk of people who care for women you know, in this country or internationally are not fellowship trained. We are well aware of that. Yeah. Um, so although we do believe in the value of the fellowship and then it does allow us to kind of dig in and be Experts, know, the experts drive and drive a lot of the, you know, kind of uh, best practices or other things. Um, we we understand that like that's not the everyday and that's not what's going to impact the most women. And so we yeah. really want people to come and engage with us. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, wrapping up, thank you, ladies, so much for joining us today here on Top Med Talk. We're going to be sure to make all of this, uh, the links and everything like that, to the SOAP organization available in our show notes. So do check that out. Um, and congratulations on a fantastic meeting so far and good luck for the next couple of days. But I, I can't imagine that it's not going to be wonderful. So congratulations. Thanks, Thank you, guys. you for having us. Yeah, thanks so much. And thanks for listening to Top Med Talk. You know, you can always find us at topmedtalk.com on social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. We're there. And uh, YouTube. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe. It helps us out. Cheers, everybody. Bye. Top Med Talk. Thanks for downloading Top Med Talk. Don't forget to subscribe. Check us out on YouTube. And of course, on social media, we're on Instagram, Facebook and X. Also, it's important to remember that Top Med Talk is the broadcasting arm of EPOM, evidence-based perioperative medicine. We'd love you to find out more about that. And the way to do that is epom.org. Check out our website and find out about some of the incredible conferences we're going to be arranging across the year. 
edpom.org.